Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. So far this season we've built a simple application here working with the Rick and Morty API that is free. Uh, here we have a list of characters that is paged and then if we were to click on a particular character we go ahead and fetch their details. Uh, again making use of retrofit to perform these network requests and as you can see here it's quite a simple application that just has two screens. And if we flip over to the code here, we can see a character list activity, a character detail activity, and then inside of our manifest here, we have two activities declared, and those are the two different screens that we just saw. Today's episode is going to introduce a new way to perform navigation within Android. Flipping over to Google here, we have the uh, navigation component, the Jetpack navigation component library. And Essentially, we can declare our navigation within the app here in a more graphical sense and make use of fragments. So the idea behind this implementation is that you have a single activity that hosts all of these different fragments. And as the user clicks a button on one screen or does some interaction on one particular page, they get navigated to another fragment, which appears as a new page. However, under the hood, it's all the same activity. There are a bunch of reasons to convert to this model, to this single activity architecture that they call it, and we will dive into those in a little bit here. But for now, I just want to give a brief overview and then dive into a little bit more of the implementation over the next few episodes. So as you can see here, we have a navigation editor. We define something called a nav graph, and we can go ahead and actually build out the navigation for our users in a graphical and simpler approach. So let's jump into it a little bit. Flipping over to Android Studio here, we'll open up our project view. Inside of our resource directory here, we're going to create a new resource directory. We're going to look for navigation. Just start typing navigation, it'll pop up. Click OK, we created this folder, and then we are going to create a navigation resource file. Here we're just going to name it the navgraph. There is only one, so we can just kind of make use of that name. And it looks like we're being prompted here to add particular dependencies, which is quite nice. So we're just going to go ahead and allow Android Studio to do that. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the build.gradle file here, and it does look like we've added the navigation fragment KTX, the navigation UI KTX. So I'm going to go ahead and just reorganize this a little bit. And so there we go. Everything has synced up here. We have our dependencies declared here. Uh, and then we're just going to flip back to our nav graph here. So at the moment, it is quite blank. If we look at the split view here, it's also pretty blank here. There's nothing other than an ID for our nav graph. Uh, but we can go ahead and click this little button, or if we do it in the design, we'll click this little button here to create a destination. And since we don't have any fragments created in the project, this isn't all that helpful. So maybe if we click create new destination here, uh, I never end up doing it this way. So we are kind of learning this together here, but wow, there's a, a lot here that they have to offer. So maybe we'll just go with a blank fragment. We will click next. And again, we're gonna convert the two activities that we have currently in the project to fragments. So we're gonna call one the character list fragment. Uh, looks like it creates a nice layout for us. We're gonna keep it Kotlin. So we'll go ahead and finish that. Uh, okay, very interesting. So if we flip over here to our uh, split viewer, we can see the code. We see inside of this XML file that has navigation as the root element. Uh, there is some information here, some attributes, an ID, a pretty important one here, the start destination. So that basically, I'm sure you can kind of figure out what that is, but that instructs the nav graph on which fragment to load initially. And then we see here actual fragment elements inside of our nav graph. So we have a character list fragment. The name is simply the name and of the fragment with our package name all the way here. The label here is something that we can get into in a little bit. So I'm going to leave it at, well, well you could just leave it as that. And then a layout here, it looks like it's actually referencing a particular layout. So if we take a look at this layout file here, there is, uh, again, just auto-generated code here, but they did add a text view with simply blank fragment text. Wow, they even added a string here. Wow, they, they certainly did a lot. Okay, uh, but anyway, we've added our first fragment to this navigation file. We can very simply just create a new destination as well, which why not? We will again do a blank fragment and we're going to name this the character detail fragment. 
click finish and now we have a little bit of that graph coming together here you can see there's a little home icon right here to kind of show that that is the beginning destination that is where everything starts and everything will spawn from and then if we take a look again at our code it basically just did the exact same thing for a new fragment however I do want to show you uh, one important attribute or one important principle within this entire library and that is the action that is associated right so at the moment if we take a look at the application when we are in this screen here and we click on a particular uh, character we navigate to a new activity now we're going to again we're going to remove the multiple activities we're just going to go to one but we do need to move from one fragment to the next that is done via an action and we can quite simply either create it in XML or in our little graphical editor we can grab onto this little handle here and if we click and drag onto the next destination we'll go ahead and get this nice little arrow that comes with it and then here inside of our code, it has declared an action. This is the action that we will invoke at the fragment level to navigate from this fragment to this fragment. To simulate exactly what we're doing here in our screen navigation, we can do so as well you know, within this library. One thing to note here is that, let me just get just to code, there is a little bit of a pattern here for the actions and they do get quite long. But the idea is action underscore, the name of your fragment that you are navigating from, underscore to, underscore the name of the fragment that you're navigating to, again the ID right here. That is just the ID for this particular action and then the destination tag is where you actually create uh, or instruct the system on which fragment you want to move to. You know, So this really could be any action that you want but obviously it's good to be verbose uh, in this case as well. And so there we have it, flipping back to our split view or maybe even our design view here. Uh, nothing looks super glorious. Maybe we can actually change, uh, sorry, I'm all over the place here. I could change, nope, this is what I was looking for. Uh, we can change the layout here. Again, this is just a tools attribute, so this is nothing other than uh, something for us to see. And so we can say activity character detail, no, not that, it's gonna be character list and then this one is going to be the detail. And so you can kind of see here uh, a little bit of what the UI is going to end up looking like. We can obviously do a better job if we build out those layouts a little bit better inside of our XML, but things are starting to get together now. You can kind of see how that begins to resemble either something like this or this little graph here, you know, where they have a handful of different routes, a handful of different locations that this user can drill into. Obviously the back stack is uh, saved for us and will be you know, just something that's bundled up inside of this particular library or this paradigm of navigation. Uh, but I think that's about it for now. In the next episode here, we're just going to go ahead and add a nav host to our activity. Uh, this is basically the fragment container view. It's pretty well named, but it is the central location where we're going to be switching our fragments in and out of. It's going to interact very nicely with uh, these different actions and this entire nav graph and the nav controller, which is one more core component to this entire library. So if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate a like. If you do notice you are not subscribed and are interested in the content to come, please do subscribe so that you don't miss out on the content that will be available soon. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.